Today, STS are very excited to be working with the Fire Service College here in Morton in Marsh. Today, we'll be exploring how the STS fiber cement boards compare with standard plasterboard when working with or coming in contact with intense heat. College itself, we provide training for um, most of the UK Fire and Rescue Service at one time or another. They constitute about a third of our business. Uh, another third of the business is international learners, mm -hmm. civil defence, fire police, that sort of thing. And then the other third of our business comes from wider markets, so that's non-emergency services um, coming here for fire safety training. The college is really happy to be able to facilitate um, research in, in any area that improves um, performance in fire safety or mm -hmm. firefighting or fire protection. And we're very happy to help SCS because we're conscious that the, the so the boards that you were bringing in have some properties that perhaps the boards don't. And it was really interesting to see how they might behave in, in a real situation. I mean, a team of five other, sorry, four other investigators, so five including myself, and we're basically on call 24-7 uh, mm -hmm. uh, to provide a fire investigation service. So basically uh, my role is to attend fires uh, and determine where they've started, how they've started, how the fires developed the way that it has, uh, and then if it's an uh, arson fire, for example, I'll work with the police, produce a report, may well end up in court, give evidence in uh, a subsequent trial. Training people to be fire investigators like here at the college or when we do it privately, um, having that experience of being dedicated investigators mm -hmm. and also having that background of fire, you know, firefighter uh, operations, mm -hmm. then that helps us with our credibility when we're trying to teach people the same thing, we've got lots of experience to fall back on. A 20-foot metal container lined with our STS boards with a realistic domestic layout it was then set alight by the fire investigators with the use of a cigarette and some accelerant. The fire was then allowed to grow inside the metal container until the investigators instructed the firemen to put out the flames. Because plasterboard is a good uh, it does prevent fire spread, but once it's obviously yeah. failed and it exposes the underside of a timber floor, yes, yeah. then those timbers are then going to be attacked by the fire, uh, which can then obviously promote fire spread. Firefighting, from a firefighting point of view, so obviously boards that are staying in situ, are, uh, it's only going to be a good thing, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. it's not, like I said, not exposing the, the underside of whatever it's protecting, whether it be the ceiling or the wall, uh, but it's not hindering the firefighters in any way. There's something called calcination. calcination so yeah. plaster, the, the moisture in cal in, sorry, the moisture in plasterboard in a fire will obviously evaporate. Yeah. And if the fire's significant enough, it will draw enough moisture out, and effectively turn that <coughs> area of the plasterboard into kind of like chalk. Um, yeah. Now, if that is, if that remains in situ, we'll call that kind of a clean burn mark, or, or there'll be sign on the wall to tell us as investigators that the fire's been more severe in that particular area because of the way the plasterboard's reacted. So if that's still in situ. That's a really useful indicator for us to look at where this fire may have started. But if that's then subsequently failed, yeah. and fallen onto the floor into a you know a bit of a mess to be honest, we lose that pattern. Hold on in the year. Yeah. I think I brought a section out and showed everybody. Mm. Yeah. You know, even though it cracked and it had been taken off the wall, it had fallen off when we were digging the piscina. Yeah. It, it still gave us some indications, and as long as we can identify that's where it's from, it still gave us some indications of the fire. thing, if I remember right. It hadn't really changed that much. It was still pretty solid. We got, we got cracks in it, haven't we? But it yeah. hadn't softened. But it wasn't yeah. a case of pick it up and it fell apart. <coughs> no. Yeah. It was still kind of pretty, what's the word I want? Robust. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, it got its integrity still. Okay. So, to kind of put it in simple terms, if it was possible to replicate two identical fires with the same furniture and the fire spread exactly the same way uh, and it looked the same, and one was with, fitted with standard plasterboard and one was fitted with STS board and you could say at the end that the, the plasterboard in the state compartment one has all failed but this, in the same situation your board stayed where it was as a fire investigator I want to go and investigate that fire. It's invaluable isn't it if you don't test what you've got and you test it with the, as you say these pretty straightforward tests that everybody else seems to be doing you're not stepping above the mark are you? and if you're going to if you are going to uh, market your product to be able to do what you've got to do and it should be tested in the correct way. Where the STS boards stand out from gypsum based boards is not only in its fire resistance but also how it reacts to high pressure water. 
the STS boards remain an integral part of the building or room. This enables fire inspectors to carry out their work faster and with more accuracy, as well as making it safer for the firefighters to enter the room during a fire to extinguish it.